Hello everyone. Well, it's been a, t a while since I've made a video, so I'm going to make a video on one of my computers. And it will be this one here. The HP Media Center. I got this computer not too long ago from a relative because they upgraded their machines to Windows 7 but nothing quite as fancy as what this one is and I don't know if you can read this but it's got light scribe I forgot to mention that this computer is from 2005 now it says it's got a 250 gigabyte hard drive that's not accurate anymore I have changed that to a 500 gigabyte hard drive that is also a lot faster than that 250 one I put I took the 500 gigabyte out of this one it's a 500 gigabyte Maxter and I put a, the Seagate that was in the HP Media Center in the Dell the Seagate was only had a transfer rate of 1.5 gigabytes a second and the Maxter has a transfer rate of 3 gigabytes a second this HP Media Center has 1 gig of RAM um, lights kind of in the way it's not focusing there we go watch TV and record TV which doesn't really work anymore because we don't have analog broadcasting here in Canada anymore so unless you got a converter box that function is pretty much useless or unless you got satellite or cable you can use it on cable as well but you need a satellite receiver if you have satellite which I don't have I have the digital TV antenna we have the yeah personal media drive bay I don't know if you can still get these drives if anybody knows you could tell me and there's the drive where it goes in and on this side there's a whole bunch of other stuff we got your S video in Come on focus your composite video in your audio right and left and there is writing there but you can't see it maybe if I turn off the light or turn the light around Yeah, you can kind of see it. Go composite to audio to. Now, what does the two mean? Means that there's more of these jacks on the back. There's your headphone jack and your microphone jack. Your FireWire port and your two USB 2.0s. Now, since I broke my mini DV camera. I don't need FireWire anymore, so, and that's something I wanted for my other two computers, which I never got, so, it came a bit late. This computer has a Intel Pentium D, one of the first, I think it was the first dual-core processor, and then it's designed for Microsoft Windows XP, Media Center Edition, of course, and they're award-winning 24-7 support. There's me HP Media Center PCM seven one sixty N power button and hard drive light. Now this here looks like a button, but it's really nothing. Okay, so that's it for the front. So I'm going to pause the video. Here is the inside, and as you can see, it is quite crowded. There is the TV tuner card, and down there in the very bottom is the modem. This red card up here is the ATI video card, which I do not have the model number for right now. There's the dual or Pentium D CPU and fan. I did clean this a couple of, I think it was last month I cleaned it, and so it's a little bit dirty, but it's all right. It's an ASUS, ASUS motherboard. Um, it's got two CD 
D two CD drives. Top one is an HP drive. It's got light scribe, DVD burning, and CD burning, and DVD rewrite, and all that good stuff. The bottom one is a DVD ROM that doesn't do any burning whatsoever. It doesn't burn CDs, and it doesn't burn DVDs. It just plays CDs and DVDs. Um, what I like about this computer is that it's got IDE, so I can use older CD drives, or I can hook up an older hard drive to it if I wanted. And it has four serial ATA connectors that it's kind of hard to see. There they are. There's the BIOS battery. It is really quite a good motherboard and CPU. The only thing this machine is lacking it is has a best tech 300 watt power supply. And I have heard that these don't have the problem that the 250 watt has. I heard that these ones are a pretty good power supply. So that's why I've left it in. If it was the 250 watt, I would probably have a different power supply in here by now. Because I don't want to take any chances with it. There's the output 300 watt. Anyway, now we'll go to the back of the machine. Okay, here's the back of the machine. There's the power supply, the switch for 115 or 240 volts. PS2 mouse and keyboard. I just have a PS2 mouse. Digital audio input and output. And your serial port. VGA onboard graphics. Another Firewire port. Four USB ports there. Ethernet. And a 7.1 channel surround sound card. Um, there's the graphics card that I put in. The ATI card. Down below there's the TV tuner card with the inputs. S-Video, Composite, Audio Left and Right 1. And then there's a coax cable going for the um, TV and radio. I don't know why they're separate. But I just have it hooked up to the radio because sometimes I like to listen to the radio in the media center. Anyway, I think that's about it for showing you the machine. So now I will put it back together and have to fix the operating system because I still haven't done that after I changed out the hard drives. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start it up. Okay, I'm going to go into the repair and shut off the light. Come on, stay in focus. Okay, once it focuses, welcome to the so welcome to PC Recovery. This program allows you to recover your PC should you experience PC failure and stability. PC Recovery works from a dedicated recovery partition on your hard drive. If you wish to recover your PC for future using the recovery partition, simply hold down F the F F10 key during the PC startup. Obviously, I can't talk today. Okay. Now uh, this is some, you know, where you gotta always click accept or I agree when you're on the, um, when you're, um, installing a program. Okay, so it's, um, restoring Windows XP and application files. So I guess I will be back when this is done. So see you soon. Okay, so we seem to be moving on quite quickly. 16 minutes. Point where, please wait while Windows is preparing to start. So I will see this time if it works or not. Last time, it didn't really work. Let's see what happens.
Okay, so it did this last time, but it came up with an error saying that it couldn't update the registry. So I will pause it here and see if anything happens that it see if it does what it should this time. Okay, so now I have gone through the steps and I am almost done setting up my HP computer. I just have to choose my network options here. And I don't feel like registering because I never do it anyway. Okay, here we go. So now there's a minute left. Okay, so here is the moment of truth. If the camera would focus. <clears throat> Let's see if it boots into Windows XP Media Center Edition. Oh yeah, I still haven't taken that disc out. So let's find out what happens. Everything is overexposed. <clears throat> well, we got a mouse. That's a start. Now let's see if the camera would focus on it. Alright, it looks like we're in. This screen always takes a minute. Okay, so right now I'm in the middle of installing my video drivers. I know it looks pretty good, but it's in a low resolution right now and I have to up the resolution. But first I have to install my video drivers the ATI drivers and I am going to be in the middle of getting my files off the hard drive I put into the Dell here. I have the Dell powering the hard drive and the SATA serial ATA cable just going into the HP. Um, it works because I've been able to copy the ATI drivers off it. Um, it's just easier than taking it out and taking the whole HP computer apart. Now it wants me to um, restart my computer, the HP anyway. Now everything is in a much higher resolution. This is too high for my liking. I like it 124 by 768. It's a nice size. That's what I'm used to because that's what it's always been for me. This is great for a higher um, resolution or a bigger monitor because the picture will be more smaller. But I just have a regular 17 inch monitor. It's good enough for me. Uh, I have to adjust the resolution now you can tell my driver installed properly okay so I'm copying my files and this is definitely a lot faster going from serial ATA hard drive to serial ATA hard drive than it is going from um, the serial ATA hard drive to a USB hard drive okay so here are the two computers put back into their um, spots and um, now I'm going to try to boot up the Dell, which I had backed up all the files onto the um, or my Seagate um, 320 gig portable hard drive. And let's find out if Windows will actually boot on the Dell. And I did get everything sorted out on the HP, so I'm going to turn on the Dell. I'm going to turn on the HP. And you should see both screens come up. There's the Dell one, and there's the HP. Better turn that around. Okay, this is nothing. This is just because I don't have the BIOS configured properly. Push F1. Gotta find out if the sound works and everything, but so far, so good. Considering I couldn't copy that one file. And there's the HP happily going so far. The Dell seems to be beating it. But we'll see about that when it gets into the welcome. Okay, since Windows was first activated on this computer, 
The hardware on the computer has changed significantly due to these changes. Windows must be reactivated. Oh, you can't even see that. Within three days. Do you want to reactivate Windows now? Yes, I do. And the hardware has not changed on this computer. It thinks it has, but it actually hasn't. So I will it activate. I didn't need to um, pause the camera because I didn't need to use my product key. Anyway, here is the HP running, and I have to somehow get rid of that trend micro always opening up. For some reason, it does, but I don't know why. Anyway, here is my Dell Dimension up again, the same as it was before I shut it down and changed the hard drive over, and it system setting changed. Don't worry about that. Um, let's see. Okay, whatever. I'm gonna close this, and I just deleted the ATI file that kept opening every time you restarted Windows. Um, I think I can go to my computer now and get a user account because I always have to do that. I guess that shows that you can. Okay, whatever that is, I don't care right now. I guess this just shows that you can back up Windows onto a portable hard drive if you've got another computer that's running and you hook up the hard drive to it and just save everything to a portable hard drive. Yes, it is slow, but as you can see, it allowed me to change my hard drive and still allowed me to keep all of my programs and the camera is not focusing, so it's driving me crazy. But it's all good and it's all working. So until next time, hope you enjoyed this long video of me talking a lot. So we'll see you again soon.